Hello, and welcome to episode number 52 of the Big Money Stylist Podcast. Now, if you're listening here on iTunes or Spotify or wherever it is you're listening to, you can also watch us on the website at bigmoneystylistnow.com. So here we are. New year, new us, Woo! new everything. New ponytail. Ho ho! <laughs> new t-shirt, new t- apparently. Okay, we filmed two in a row. Okay, I'm not a big dirt ball where I wear my hair in a pony. But look, you can wear MBR in a pony, so that's impressive. My hair is still freshly washed, guys. Aww. Two weeks in a row. Just kidding. Mine's, two, mine's two weeks in a row dirty. Just kidding. Really I'm like, oh, that's I, worse than me. No, you know what? I can't go more than like... I really can't go more than three days. My hair, you three? Yeah, because my hair is naturally really fine and really straight. And I now that I'm darker and I don't have any like that many highlights to like rough it up. Literally by like day three, I people are like, "Oh, you feeling okay?" Like I, <laughs> I look greasy. Like I have to wash my bangs or do a pony or something. Like, oh. uh, I know. Like you have coarser hair plus you have highlights, so you yeah. can probably go a minute. Um. Uh, one time I went 12 days. That's, don't brag about that. I'm not That's proud disgusting. of it. I'm not proud of Did it. Did you shave your legs in between then? Hey, like, I showered every sh- day. Like- I just did shampoo. <laughs> Fuck you, Danielle. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Le- okay, let's be clear. It's only bad if a client sits in your chair and you're about to go do it, and they're like, sorry, I haven't washed it. It's been over a week. And you're like, don't tell me that. Oh. Then you put on the gloves to take out the extensions. <laughs> <laughs> And it's funny because, no, that's so true. It is true. When you touch it and it feels grimy, I'm like, yeah. like, What's funny is they're always like, I'm so sorry. And you're like, if you feel this bad, just come in wet with the shampoo then next time. Like, But we've seen it all. <laughs> like, I feel like I've se- if I didn't do hair, I would get, we've seen some stuff. You know what? When I was doing hair in St. Louis, the like first salon I worked at, there's only been one time. I've been doing hair for almost 10 years now that I've actually had to go through and shampoo a client. Oh, I've she had to. came in and she was really nice, but she was this older Indian woman. And mm. I was like, Mm-mm. like yeah. I touched it, literally almost threw up. And I was like, I'm going to have yeah. to shampoo you first because the color will not even like eat I, through this. I have had that happen. Like I was like, oh, my God, like it was so dirty that I just was like. I can't. Yeah, same thing. I was like, I can't get through this. I'm like, we give her a quick wash and do a, a nice clarifier seven seven times. <laughs> but you what? know, I don't know. Yeah, that's so. One of my anyways. clients, she's mixed, and when she came in, I was like, girl, I'm gonna be shampooing you a few times. She's like, I know. She's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, and we joke around back and forth. Like, she's super chill. She's really really fun. And I put shampoo on, and I was like dude it's not even lathering she's like i know isn't that the worst i'm like ew <laughs> but i'm just kidding my uh, hair did that this morning too <laughs> you know what i have to address this in right now there was it's girls were saying like it's better if you don't wash your hair every day girls you're just being lazy like it's like there that there's not 100 percent truth to that like you can wash your hair like every other day every three days like it's not actually better for your hair to go a week and actually, do you know what makes it really bad to wait so long? What? Because then at that point, you're putting product over product yeah, over product. And I, it's almost like you're frying your hair. Totally. Like if I put any heat on my hair, if, if I've got too much dry shampoo or too much, because I'll do a little bit oh. of hairspray or texture spray or whatever. Like literally, that's when I fry my hair. And it's I like, one thing that people don't know is like you will do more damage with heat styling tools than you will with color or extensions. Like if you don't know how to use heat tools on your hair or you're going like get, getting it blown out or done somewhere and they don't know how to do it, you will do more damage to your hair with daily heat tools and not protecting it than you will with anything else. So, 100%. So keep that in mind and be super careful. And whatever stylist you're going to, they should really be educating you. Like, I try to educate, like, over and beyond educate my clients. And, like, if I see their hair break, I'm like, tell me about what you're doing. Like, how can we help this? And, like, trying to problem solve and help them figure out how to, like, preserve their two inches of bangs. Because I get it. Mm-hmm. I'm that person who has, like, I just don't have great hair. But... Well, you would have better bangs if you wouldn't use <laughs> those oh wide tooth. <laughs> Do you know why I remember this? What? I was just sifting through the BMS con footage yesterday. What and was I, I doing? You, I was like, we were on stage and I was like, Danielle, tell her what you did to your bangs. And you're like, oh, okay, God well, it. it was just this one time. I was like, mm. oh my God. So I'll just share the story really fast. <laughs> I, you know, like everybody has this moment as a girl. Like, you know, how one day you like look in the mirror and you're like, where did this new bang come from? <laughs> And you know it's just heat, and it like you maybe like highlighted it like four months ago, and then heated it up so much it just broke off. And then one day you're like, I don't know where you're like my bang. <laughs> so like I had started getting like little broken pieces, and I was like, oh my god. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna cut bangs. So I cut some bangs, like the whole Farrah Fawcett like thingy is coming back, and I'm like, cute. I'm gonna cut like some shorter bangs. Instantly I hated it, and then I was like, god, this this side's too heavy. And I went, I was at home, and I, I. <laughs> I had like a bunch of old scissors sitting in my drawer and I just grabbed the first texture shears not even paying attention to like if you do hair like you have the small tooth ones and the wide tooth ones 
I grabbed the super, <laughs> the super. They were actually a fine tooth, but I, I don't know. I don't believe you. Okay. Anyway, I saw the notches. Don't lie. I literally <laughs> took them like eyeball length, the scissors in eyeball length and did like on an angle. Like I don't even normally cut like this. I don't know what was wrong with me. And I was not <laughs> drinking and I <laughs> chop and I saw like, I already hated my bangs and I saw another three inch piece <laughs> fall and I was like, oh, and I literally, I've never had this happen, but like. Have you ever like done something to your hair and you felt a little nauseous? Like, oh, I yeah. felt like that girl in the YouTube video where she was like forever ago, where she was curling her hair and it just came off, and she was like, "That's how I felt." Like I saw my hair fall to the floor and I was like, <gasps> and then I didn't. I had this huge notch in my bangs and I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" And then like after like three weeks and it grew out a little bit, I went in and just point cut in those <laughs> tiny baby notches, and and now it's fine. Now they're growing out and. They're, they're good. That's my story. Okay, but let's <laughs> let's reel it in. Like, what is our topic so for today? So today, because we're here at a new year, or we're coming into a new year, and I feel like this is the time of change, mm -hmm. but also change and focus. So I really want to address kind of social media. Oh, yeah. Because I know, number one, it is really <laughs> hard. Like, we tell our students, like, okay, put yourself out there. Do videos. Do pictures. Mm -hmm. They're ready to vomit because they're like, oh, I actually have to do this publicly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then when you do do it publicly, <laughs> you already know. If you do it, I feel like it's very, and I said this on an Instagram post not long ago. I said it's very easy to create in the privacy of your own home. Yeah. It's very difficult to create when you're doing it out in the open public where opinions just roam rampant and wild. Right. What do they say about opinions? It's like an asshole. Everybody has one. <laughs> yeah. Ha <laughs> 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 Daniel's like, damn it. Damn so, <laughs> but I really want to address that and kind of how to like put aside, like just put away the side noise, block it out, have tunnel vision to use social media because it's an amazing, yeah. beautiful tool, but it also kind of has like that dark side to it too. You know what? If you feed into the <coughs> trolls out there, then you're no better than the trolls. So like, mm -hmm. I honestly, I feel like I'm pretty good at that. Because I don't know, I've been I've had my business going for the last almost eight years now, and like right out of the gate when I put myself out there, you have you're gonna have some fucking asshole make some kind of comment or whatever, and they're like, "Whoa!" And you want to like be like, "I'm not gonna do it." But the funny thing is, is like all the time when I'm on social media, like I'm not I'm not on a ton, but every now and again I'll like run across an account like a cute girl or whatever, or hairstylist, whatever. I'm like, "Oh my god, they have like half a million followers." I have no idea who they are. So like the funny thing is, is like I look at it in that respect where like there's so many people on the planet. It. like mm -hmm. like it kind of mm -hmm. like you can't assume that everybody knows everything about you and your business so if you have drama that happens with inside of your own business like like I don't know like don't assume that everybody knows that about you do you know what I mean like mm -hmm. I don't know I just feel like sometimes they say like don't air your your dirty laundry I mean there's times where you're like there's things where um Things will happen in your business where you like have to go out and publicly say something about it. I just noticed a, a post that like Drybar had done on their Instagram, and I was like, "Ooh, shit!" And there's sometimes like there's things that you have to go in and publicly be like, "Hey, this happened, and this is what it is." We you hear know you. I mean? We know. We, it is yeah, what it is. It is yeah. what it is, and it's like almost like a public address of like, "Here it is." But other than that, like you can't assume like everybody knows who you are, and if you go in with that mindset of like. I and it's so it's fun, it sounds funny, but I just like going with the mindset of like, hey, like you have your your circle, but your circle is not really as big as you think, even if you have a half million million followers. You know what I mean? And do you know what's so crazy? So I had there is a hairstylist, and I don't want to say any names at all because this was like a really big, huge thing that blew up. But she's apparently pretty famous, and she mm -hmm. was a stylist to a very 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 famous singer like it's a oh. man like everybody knows who he is mm -hmm. he's married he ended up having an affair with this artist oh, really? and it came out crazy publicly like she, i haven't even heard of it shows how um, much i'm kind of it, it was it was not crazy it was maybe it was probably like in the past year or so because okay. it's somewhere at some point when i was on instagram mm. but um she ended up shutting down her instagram because people were coming back and making the meanest cruelest yeah. remarks like was she right and what she did yeah i value the sanctity of marriage so that's really not cool like you should have done that but at the same time, but nobody not, knows the story, the full story. Well, at the same time, I'm not going to sit there and be like, wow, you're such a piece of shit because yeah. I was just raised better than to do that. Number right. one. And also, I don't really have time to sit on social media and to be such a negative a-hole all the time. Yeah. Like that, I feel like I value my time and my mental energy and my peace totally. so much that I would never never think to take time out of my yeah. day to say mean well, shit to people and that's what you have to think is well like if i ever see like a weird comment or anything i'm kind of like 
I might, like, we're humans. We mm. might think that. Like, we might be scrolling. We might see something and be like, ah, oh, what a douchebag. But we're not going <laughs> to, like, I always ask myself, like, I'm like, I'm not going to text that. Like, they're right that. Like, the people that do that, you're like, you're a few clicks off. Like, who has time to do that? Do you know what I mean? And that's my big thing. Who I, I could sit there, mm-hmm. spend even, let's say you're even quick at it. Like, you're a yeah. fast one. <laughs> and you're only spending 30 minutes doing some crazy Instagram story about how right. much you Let's say you don't like peanut butter. I don't know. Whatever people are talking about these days. But even then, that's 30 minutes where you have been focusing so much negative energy. It's not healthy. No. No. And that's why I just know I feel like my bubble, my space, who I surround myself with, like I value that energy so much that I would never think to take time to then go and be purposefully nasty to someone else. I've seen people too, like the girls, girls that like have big followings. I, I there was this one big blogger in Utah or somewhere I can't remember, and somebody said something negative about she never posts ki- posts uh, um, pictures of her son. She always posts pictures of her daughter or something, oh and they gosh. were like they totally like shunned her as a mom and da, da da da. And she got on her story and like fucking went off. But I was like, you know what? You didn't. They didn't deserve a response from you. Like, mm. <laughs> like they don't nope. know you as a mom. They don't know your story. They don't know if your kid's fucking crazy and it's hard to get a photo of like don't let them get in your head and feel like you even have to publicly defend yourself over something like that like you don't need to you have to understand these people have nothing else to do and if anything you're like if you're but if you're triggered by me let me do you a favor and block you you know what I mean because then you're like you can't see me so hopefully you're in a happier place and I just let it go so I see people all the time where they're trying to like defend themselves I'm like don't fucking defend yourself over a troll they're not worth your time focus on yourself and your business and if you're comfortable with who you are you can just keep tunnel vision and keep plowing forward and you don't need to waste your time defending shit and gosh you just said something I wanted to address and I feel like it totally left me now but even when it comes down to um fuck what was I gonna say you something about like going through and blocking them which is also super important because there's just no point even going through and like giving it energy any energy yeah no never and I just know like myself I don't respond really to much of anything on social media like I'll go out and I'll post and like I'll like some things like our students like because I love I love looking at hair from our students I'll submit it I do it's always so pretty and I'm just such a sense of like ah you guys are doing it like I love doing that but dms I rarely answer to like I just don't feed into any of it I recently turned off my dms and it's not like I get a, I don't get a ton of DMs, but I don't want, I don't know. I was like, I just don't have time. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know. I don't like anything behind closed doors because that m- opens up room for people to say negative shit. Like I even closed the comments on my blog because I feel like that was the one place where I would get like stupid negative comments. And I don't respond to my comments anyways. Cause I just, I'm busy and I don't, I don't get a ton, but like, I don't know. I just was like, I don't, it's more of like my, my blog is more like my platform where I just post what I'm doing like each week, whether it's hair, whether it's podcast, I love fashion. Like I'm super like, I'm kind of passionate about fashion and I, I think that like how you dress determines like how you set your day and how you feel. And so even people yes. that think that's kind of like superficial, there's a shit ton of fashion bloggers out there who kind of like can relate to me and they know what I'm talking about. Like it's not, it's not just fashion. Like literally like if you, if you dress better, you act the part better and like, it's just what it is. And like, anyways, but my blog is that just is like, very true though. but it is, but my mm-hmm. blog is just like my platform where I post everything. And like, I started getting like stupid comments and I was like, you know what? That's so cowardly. Like that's the one place where people know that you're the only person that sees it and you have to go in and like, publish it you know what I mean so I was like I don't need to see that because what happens is even though I can ignore it and not comment it's still I'm like fucking assholes like it's human nature to like see Mm -hmm. something and be like bah and it makes you second guess what you're doing and it actually kind of like sets you back a minute you know what I mean so for me I'm like I don't want to see that and it's so funny too because like if I have emails that come in and I can tell because my comments will come in through an email, yeah. I fe- you can feel the energy through technology and through text. If I see like the first few sentences, I'm like, fucking delete. And because if I open it, I know if I open it, it could throw off my day. And I'm like, I don't have time for that shit. I'm trying to build stuff. I want to be a good mom. I want to be a good wife. I don't have time for that shit. I don't want to bring this. I don't want to open up this can of worms and let it invade my space like a virus so that I let mm-hmm. it invade me and then I push out to my children. Like, fuck that. Like, you can't let 
let the virus affect you because it'll affect how you operate as a mom. It'll affect how you operate as a wife. It'll affect how you operate as, as a human being and a business owner. So it's like I kind of like there's social media is a beautiful tool. But there, so was, there was years that I was like, fucking social media. But the thing is, is like think of it as that. It is a tool. You're either you either use your social media to be social or you use your social media as a tool. I do not use my social media to be social. Sure. <laughs> People I, know if you need me, you better text me. Totally. Or mm-hmm. you, for, for me, I'm like, if you don't text me, you can't text me. But personal people in my bubble can text me. But, <laughs> but, you listening yeah. cannot text me. And you know, people can't even email me anymore. They, they like, I my email's not on my website anymore. And I have like three people that you have to email to go get to me. I get your email. You do? I actually do. <laughs> you get my emails? I get some emails from you, yeah. Well, because I, I, <laughs> yes. no, I told my, the guy who helps me run my blog, I'm like, hey, this the education needs to be dealt to Ani, and I'm just like better delegating because sure. if I'm going to run a successful business, I have to be in a place of creation. I have to be in a mindset mm-hmm. of like, you can't, if you let all these trolls bog you down, then you'll start second guessing everything you do. And that's like, you you don't need that. Like, so, and it's funny too, because we have some, some crazies in, in our past and whatever, and people will say, oh, did you see what she posted? And it doesn't trigger me anymore because I'm not, I don't allow that into my space. I'm literally like. Well, and the funny thing is, because people do that. They're like, did you see? I'm like, no. Yeah. And that's the funny part is I literally don't see anything. Yeah. So because I don't see it, I don't hear it, I don't give it energy, it literally to me just doesn't even it doesn't, exist. Yeah. And it doesn't, yeah, exactly. It just yeah. doesn't exist. Yeah, it doesn't, I'm like, like, I don't I'm like, I don't know. What I can tell you is that M&M came out with a new bar that's normal M&Ms with minis inside of it. So it's delicious. Oh. Like an M&M chocolate bar with mini. It just, that's what I can tell you. <laughs> can I tell you anything that's happening on social media? Nope, but I can't tell you that much. Yeah. But even like one thing that I do want to address as well is that I know it can definitely be hard. Like when people say negative things about you, your art, your work, you as a person, your spirituality, yeah. your clothes, your face. Like, oh my gosh, I remember really quick when I first moved here, um, me and you and like Garrett and like the team, like we were doing a um we did like a quick like Facebook thing Mm -hmm. and someone commented they were like you guys looked better without plastic surgery and I sat there and I was like who does we all did apparently (laughs) this was literally like a year this is when I first moved here like October I was like I've never had plastic surgery on my on my face oh yeah well and then and then I sat there and I was like I've never done anything like (laughs) I've never had Botox fillers so I sat there and I was like oh my god is my face so perfect it looks like I have thank you I literally took it and I turned three of us had plastic surgery me you and Garrett no no, it was saying it was I think it was like me, you, Val was there, Garrett was there, but they were like, <laughs> You guys looked better before you started like doing stuff to your face or something. Oh, that's funny. And I sat there and I was like, Well, I haven't done anything. So I'm just gonna because I can't hear your tone and how it's written, I'm gonna take it how I want it and you just told me my face is perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like that's that's I, I swear like that's how I have to reframe things someday. But I, th- <laughs> I think yeah, people are funny because they'll like assume stuff. People ask me all the time, like, Oh, you get so much cheek filler. I'm like, These cheek these cheekbones are real. You're I'm like, like these puppies like, are born with them. I'm like, Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> No, I mean, we could get more in there maybe. I don't know. But. <laughs> You're like, but thank you for noticing my thing. <laughs> <laughs> but even like I know that it's hard when people say things and we have an initial like reaction, I feel, to protect ourselves. So mm-hmm. it's almost like, like a defend. cover. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we want to defend. We want to yeah. protect. We want to cover ourselves. But don't yeah, let it's, it's natural. some a-hole make yeah. you play small now. Yeah. Like don't stop putting out your content and your videos and your photos and being you and talking about whatever it is you want to talk about because one person yeah. or a a couple people or whoever they don't like it right. that's fine because at the end of the day like you can't make everybody happy right and if you're gonna go through and only post things that will have no form of like you can't like everything yeah. is gonna be controversial yeah even down everyone to, like, has an opinion you could be talking about hairspray and people be like well hurt your teeth are fucking ugly i actually had a, <laughs> I had a blogger who recently was like she was asking me um she was like hey like I recently had veneers. I had a chipped tooth when I was little, and I had a veneer, and it broke off, and I so I ended up just doing oh, all no veneers. Way. I lied. I have I've had I've had my teeth done, so there we go. Um, <laughs> but she was talking to me. She's like, yeah, I'm because she's a big blogger. She has like five hundred thousand followers, and she's like, I'm like, yeah, people are so crazy. And she's like, yeah, somebody like I was in the middle of doing lives, and they're like, how can you even focus when your teeth look that bad? Or so <gasps> something like that. And I was like. Oh That's my god! Like, how can you focus? Fuck off! And then she's like, "So I'm thinking about getting veneers." And I was like, "Oh!" And I was like, "Well, has it always bugged you?" And she's like, "Yeah, kind of." I'm like, "But don't let that comment like like people are dickheads." She's like, "No, I know." Uh, and that to me, and I hear that, I'm like, "Why? Yeah, why did you feel the need to be so cruel?" I don't know. Like I, that blows and insecurities, I, maybe. But I do think it's human nature. Like, and I'm sure you have this too. Like every now and again, you're like. 
hmm, what's her hair doing? Or what? You know, it's human nature to notice things. For sure. You can think things. But don't let it sit and fester because then you're that mean person. Like, just be like, meh, whatever. I, you know what I mean? Like, it, <laughs> like, even in my own salon, if I feel like things are like, talk people are starting to talk down a lot about somebody I immediately will change the subject because I'm like we don't need to go there like no we can like and I and everybody at my salon's pretty good about that like they'll be like hey, somebody said it was Ian he came in the other day and w- this conversation started to go a li- like we were joking around but it started to go a little and then Ian <laughs> comes in and goes the end as Garrett says the end and I was like exactly the end and everybody like <laughs> everybody went silent and they're like nice good job Ian because he like ended the conversation of where it could have gone do you know what I mean oh, man. when a joke gets like too funny borderline offense about somebody and you're like the oh, end like yeah. we all know there's no reason to talk about it. there's no reason to say anything like the end so yes. i thought it was funny that he did that i was like yeah the end <laughs> the end i do appreciate garrett's emails that start that in that way the, the end. end yeah garrett jy and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> for end. some reason that makes me laugh so hard he's telling a story oh he's just, story for everything he yes and he has to end the story like he whatever he's crazy the end. but he's funny but like so. the, but like what we kind of want to get to you guys out there is like social media is a great tool like yes. use social media. Like I know that if you are a blogger, you have to engage a little bit more. And there's definitely like some there there's there's some art and science to the commenting and all the other stuff that goes on. But just know that if there's any negativity or anything that goes on, like that's what we sign up for when we're de- choosing to put ourselves out there. Mm-hmm. So stay cor- stay the course. Delete those people. Block those people. And just be confident in what you're doing and where you're going. And if you're getting results in your own business by putting yourself out there, that should be enough validation to yourself that you don't need to deal with anybody else's shit, regardless of what they say. And if you have any issues with somebody or even if you're scrolling down and you you have ne- even if I'm scrolling through and I find myself judging somebody, I'm like, I'm going to unfollow them because I'm being a fucking asshole right now. So I unfollow them not because of them, but because I find myself being like annoyed with it, their posts or whatever it is, whether it's how they're talking. Maybe maybe I don't like th- whatever it is. And I'm like, I don't really know this person. I don't want to really feel like that towards them. So I'm yeah. just going to unfollow them. And it's not personal. It's just like that's that's how I deal with social media. And that's how what I choose to do. But if you're willing to put your yourself out there to build a business through social media it's amazing but just understand that when people say stuff negatively negatively and they will like that's that's just a part of that's a part of social media and at the end of the day really people who do that are judging you based off their own perceptions of you yeah because like the team here knows me really well my family knows me like the people who surround me every single day know me so well yeah. that even like so I've seen some things here and there like a long time ago but I was just like oh that doesn't seem nice but then I'm like Meh, whatever because yeah. then I realized I'm like you literally know nothing about me right. so why would I ever like Garrett says why would I give you any kind of like retail or space inside of my mind right. when you don't you don't deserve it because you know nothing about that's me. that's true there's like such there there's a lot of it I like what you said like space in my in my head like if you find yourself like obsessing about someone or something that's probably not a good thing like you know what I mean like they don't deserve no. that much retail space inside of your mind and where else could you take that energy and put it towards something that actually benefits you that helps you in business that helps you in life and if and if you can create more success for yourself that will spill o- over into your children's life so people that are out there you know like doing these negative things you have to ask yourself where is this affecting like especially if you're a mom like where is this affecting you and your ability to be a better mom or a better parent like because maybe you could create more success in your life because that ultimately I think would be better like I don't know as a mom like yeah like just to have children see that example versus other examples it's having a better headspace consistently right I mean we've just talked about consistency and being not consistent but just not allowing yourself to be put in a frame or any kind of like mode that can negatively affect you because it's never worth it yeah anything that can affect your peace of mind is not worth it yeah and that goes for people in your life that can go for friends that can go for social media that's why I would rather just block someone and move on and be like yeah all right don't whatever you know just is yeah even if for Garrett and I like we'll get in like a heated argument and there's times that I'm like we're just both overworked and stressed and tired like there's no sense to sit in this argument right now mm-hmm. nobody is gonna win and that's when I literally like it's funny because he's kind of a he's kind of a fighter and I'm just like whatever and I'll literally just walk away I'll be like okay I'll see you I'll see you later and he we it always comes back like we come back a couple hours later whatever we cool off and he'll say like the other night this actually happened and he's, <laughs> I'm sitting in the theater room with Ruby. We're watching a movie and he comes in and he's so funny. Instead of like directly coming to me and being like, I was an asshole. He goes, well, Ruby, dad was an asshole. <laughs> like right there in front of me. So I, and I wanted to, and I wanted to be a jerk back and be like, oh, 
cute. So are you sorry? <laughs> you know, but I, I didn't. I just was like, I just was like, yeah. I'm like, we, we, we were in a heated debate that wasn't going to serve either of us. And like, so anyways. Well, Ruby. Yeah. And on that yeah. note. So here's what I encourage you guys to do is really go through. And even if you have to look through your social media and get people and unfollow people, whatever it is, do it. Anything that affects your peace of mind and your sanity and that happy place, guys, is never worth it. And know that unfollowing someone or blocking someone, it's really not that offensive nor a big no, deal. No, And you know what's so funny? Like, it, I always, like, tell myself, I'm like... It, like people like overthink things they're like oh my gosh yes. oh my god i unfollow this person or what are they gonna think and i'm like get over it like 10 bucks says they won't yeah even they don't notice, notice. <laughs> and guess what if they do notice like who cares like if you feel better it doesn't matter so people put way people put way too much thought and energy into what do people think of me on social media i'm like do you really fucking care like <laughs> if you're using it as a tool to build a business ultimately like you kind of you know what you're offering you know what you're doing and so you kind of care but you kind of don't Yep. So on that note, thank you for listening and being here with us for the BMS podcast number 51. Yes. And we will see we you may, guys. Wait, wait, before we end that. We may be making some changes with the podcast. We're not sure yet, but... Uh, we will keep you guys updated. We will updated. keep you guys in tune. In tuned? <laughs> in t- tune in tune next in. episode. <laughs> All right, we'll let you know. maybe announcements. We're going to let you know. All right, bye. Bye. <laughs>